Thank you. And we will now move on to the next item of business. The next item of business is a debate on motion 5154 in the name of Ash Reagan on fireworks and pyrotechnic articles at Scotland Bill. Before I invite Ash Reagan to open the debate, I call on Keith Brown to signify Crown consent to the Bill. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. For the purpose of Rule 9.11 of the Standing Orders, I advise the Parliament that Her Majesty, having been informed of the purport of the Fireworks and Pyrotechnic Articles Scotland Bill, has consented to place her prerogative and interests, insofar as they are affected by the Bill, at the disposal of the Parliament for the purposes of the Bill. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And we are now able to begin the debate. I invite those members who, who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons. I call on Ash Reagan, Minister, to speak to and move the motion. Up to seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I feel uh, very passionately about this groundbreaking legislation. And we know that without the protection that this bill provides, many people and animals will continue to be affected by the use of excuse me presiding officer i feel i may not have got to the right place in my speech due to being called a little bit earlier than i was expecting to be let me start again presiding officer i am very pleased to open this final debate for the pyrotechnics and fireworks article scotland bill and i thank the criminal justice committee for their detailed scrutiny of the bill and the stakeholders that I have engaged in and helped to shape it as well. So um, we know that without the protection that this bill provides, many people and animals will continue to be deeply affected by um, their use and the deliberate misuse of fireworks and pyrotechnics. And earlier this month, I met with NHS staff from the Scottish National Burn Centre at Glasgow Royal Infirmary. So the harrowing accounts of injuries uh, caused by fireworks and pyrotechnics tragically reinforce why this bill is needed and it's of extreme concern that without the additional restrictions proposed by this bill people will continue to suffer life-changing injuries with many requiring months of physical and psychological aftercare uh, so the first account i heard of was a young man who following um, a pyrotechnic explosion had uh, severely and permanently uh, disfigured his hand. So he was a tradesman, and the long-term impact of that was, uh, you know, understandably very severe. And he had to undergo years of intensive therapy in order to be able to return to his work. The second account was of an innocent bystander. So that was a, a young person who was at school, and they, they sustained a very serious uh, burn injury on their arm due to a pyrotechnic and being set off in a crowd where it was really difficult to get away from the device once it had been set off. Uh, they were just about to set their school exams and it was obviously a very crucial point in that young person's life. And after their injury, they had to overcome uh, physical and psychological issues, uh, even just to allow them to continue with their schooling. And the third presiding officer was a man who returned to a firework after it had been lit and he then sustained a serious hand injury. And he continues to undergo psychological care as a result. And this is long after uh, the physical wounds have healed. And what was striking about all of these accounts was the significant treatment required. Years of surgery, physiotherapy and psychological care in order to deal with both the physical and also the mental impact. And this is surely a terrible and unacceptable toll to pay for something which in the right hands and in the right circumstances should and can be enjoyed safely. So I believe that the Criminal Justice Committee heard some heartbreaking accounts too. Uh, they heard from the National Autistic Society of Scotland about the debilitating impacts that fireworks, particularly when used sporadically, can have on people with autism. And they heard how this can, in some cases, lead to shutdowns where the autistic person reacts involuntarily which could include a physical or verbal distress response, making it difficult to provide that calming protection. And this can, of course, be incredibly distressing. So that ability to plan and prepare for the use of fireworks and pyrotechnics gives autistic people and those who care for them the opportunity to put safeguards in place. And of course, the committee also received evidence on the sickening attacks on our emergency service workers 
when they are putting themselves on the line in order to keep our communities safe. And, presiding officer, I do not want to believe that anyone in this chamber wants to see people in Scotland physically or mentally harmed, and nor do they want to see autistic people acutely distressed or to hear about our emergency service workers being exposed to such sickening attacks. So, in taking this legislation through Parliament, I listened to arguments that we should just you know, stick with the status quo, that convictions and prosecution numbers are low, and that injuries from, fire, from fireworks and also from pyrotechnics are rare. But these arguments uh, failed at the time, and they still fail to be convincing, and they failed to persuade me. And perhaps more crucially, they failed to persuade the dedicated staff at the Burns Clinic that I met in Glasgow earlier this month. So, moving on to the core policies of the Bill. They are the result of extensive consultation, engagement and evidence gathering, and first, the firework licensing system. So, that will put in place robust checks and balances by requiring applicants to undertake mandatory training. Secondly, is the proxy purchasing offence, which makes it clear that any adult supplying fireworks or pyrotechnics to a child without a legitimate reason is committing a crime. And thirdly, the bill puts restrictions on permitted days of supply and use of fireworks by the public. And these dates are based on existing firework periods and following engagement with faith groups, strike a balance between allowing people to continue to buy and use fireworks for traditional events, whilst limiting the problematic and sporadic use of fireworks. And fourth, local authorities will have the power to designate firework control zones, where it will be an offence for fireworks to be used either by the public or for professionals, other than in a public firework display or for other essential purposes, such as safety checks. And lastly, the offences relating to possession of pyrotechnic articles in public places and at certain events without a reasonable excuse. And this means that Police Scotland will have the necessary powers to take a preventative approach to tackle the misuse of fireworks and pyrotechnics through intelligence-led policing. And what I'm presenting today is the result of having listened to the committee, to communities, to the police and other stakeholders, and having modified my proposals in light of this. And so I believe that the bill balances the legitimate right to use fireworks and pyrotechnics with the need to protect public safety. Presiding officer, I accept that fireworks misuse currently presents a number of unusually difficult challenges for the police in particular. The reality is that much of the evidence is literally um, burnt or blown up at the time of the offence. And I've heard calls uh, to focus on the enforcement of existing legislation, but the bill that I am presenting to Parliament today adds to the existing legislation. It provides clarity for those whose job it is to keep our communities safe, and it puts those robust checks and balances in place to ensure that those who can access fireworks can use them safely and lawfully. So, presiding officer, I'm grateful for the consideration that Parliament has given this bill. Indeed, the Scottish Government submitted a number of amendments which improved the bill as a result of that consideration by Parliament. And this bill is an important milestone in our journey to change the relationship that Scotland has with fireworks and pyrotechnics. And it's a key part of reducing the harm, the distress and the injury caused by these items. And we'll put early and robust intervention in place to stop them falling into the wrong hands. And I therefore hope that the whole par Parliament will feel able to support it. So I move that Parliament agrees to the Fireworks and Pyrotechnic Articles Scotland Bill be passed. Thank you, Minister. And I would just uh, advise for the sake of clarity that this is follow-on business and therefore attention needs to be paid to the progress of the day's proceedings. I now call on Jamie Green. Uh, up to six minutes, please. Thank you. Uh, can I start by uh, thanking uh, the Minister for opening comments, all members of the Criminal Justice Community, Committee, our clerks, but also the, all the organisations, third sector, community groups, businesses and others who have engaged in the process from the beginning right up to this end point. It has been a difficult journey, no least uh, because of the truncated scrutiny that we were required to go through 
Uh, and first of all, I should say that cannot and should not become the norm. That is no way to make good law, and in my view, was unnecessary on this occasion. But the government uh, has a problem on its hands that it is trying to fix. It was trying to specifically fix the issue of the proxy purchasing of fireworks and people giving them to minors. That could have been addressed, in my view, uh, in a different way with the rest of the provisions of the bill given more time for scrutiny. Which brings me to the bill itself, because the more I learned about fireworks and their misuse, uh, the more confused the landscape became, and indeed the more confusing the government's approach in this legislation came. As a dog owner, I should say I know firsthand the distress that fireworks cause. My little rescue dog, Astro, would testify such were he here today. And I also know that many communities are blighted, absolutely blighted by antisocial behaviour year after year. We heard very powerful testimony about that. I know that farmers, dog homes, A&E departments, plastic surgeons, community bodies uh, and council, community councils, they all want something to be done. The question posed to us, however, as lawmakers is not should we do something, but what should we do and how should we do it? These benches worked constructively and tirelessly, many late at night, to consider uh, this bill. At stage two, we submitted 77 amendments. I know that because I moved and spoke to practically every single one of them. But throughout this process, we tried to make the bill meaningful and strengthen it. We tried to force the government to review those pieces of legislation that already exist. Legislation which is already open to the police and to prosecutors to combat the use and the misuse of fireworks. We tried to increase the fines and the sentencing for the misuse of fireworks. We tried to increase the penalties and sentencing, sentencing for those who use fireworks as a weapon, specifically against those uh, who work in our emergency service workers. And I'm pleased that the government conceded on that one. We tried to give our local councils more autonomy in decision making over these so-called firework control zones. We tried to create genuine no firework zones, as did other members of the Chamber, which actually deliver on the promise that there will be no fireworks in your community. That is what people told us they wanted, but it is not what they are getting. We tried to force the government to come back to the Parliament with concrete proposals about what this licensing scheme might actually look like. The problem is we just do not know. What about the compensation scheme for the businesses that we are shutting down overnight when we pass this law, if it is passed? What about the fireworks safety plan that we should be seeing from the government? A plan which actually has the buy-in unusually, of the industry itself. They want further regulation in this space. All of these sensible opposition amendments and all of them shot down at stage two and stage three by ministers. At stage one, the cross-party committee report genuinely was one of the most critical I've ever written and ever read. And there was no dissent, no disagreement. It was a cross-party effort. At stage two, nearly every amendment was split 50-50 by the committee, all voted down by use, the use of a casting vote. And that's quite telling and quite important. At stage three, the government brought forward few amendments, despite widespread concerns about the bill. Of course, the bill contains some sensible proposals. But the question is, will it meet its primary objective to improve firework safety and reduce the harm they cause to society? And I'm not convinced they will. This idea that we are restricting the sale of fireworks to 37 days per year and they're used to 57 days. On the face of it, I can see why to some people that sounds like a great idea. But here's the problem. There are genuine vocal concerns out there about stockpiling, about the black market and the white van man scenario. And this could get worse, not better. The bill randomly selects certain religious festivals, but excludes others. I have concerns this will be challenged in the courts. And let's not forget the bizarre situation where the law says you cannot let fireworks off in your backyard to celebrate something out with of the defined period. But if you can afford to pay a company to do it, that's fine. 365 days a year. And national exemptions mean even in, in these so-called firework control zones, you might still, still hear fireworks going off and there's nothing you can do about it. It's bonkers and it's nonsensical. What about the licensing scheme? Well, you could refuse the license if you've committed arson but not an act of terror. It doesn't regulate online sales, nor does it stop people crossing over the border for England for their stash. What about the fact that now courier companies apparently are responsible for the checking of licenses, not retailers? And what about enforcement? Because that's really what it comes down to. Last year, there were nearly 1,000 reports of fireworks misuse in Scotland. Not one single criminal conviction. I've stated that fact before, but it's an important one. There have only been 16 
criminal convictions for fireworks-related offences over five years. I make the point that the laws as they currently stand are simply not being enforced, and we should remember that before we start passing new laws further restricting the use of fireworks. Are the police seriously going to respond to every call from every member of the public and turn up with blue lights flashing to see who has let off a fire firework? I think we all know the real answer to that question. And I really don't have time to outline all my reasons for why I do have grave concerns, because there are many, more than I had at stage one. And it is with sincere regret I say to those people who are watching this, who think that this bill will be the great panacea needed to tackle pro problematic firework use, it is with regret I tell them it is not. And it's for these reasons that these benches will abstain on the bill in the knowledge that it will likely pass. I hope I never have to come back to this chamber and say to the minister or anyone else who voted for this bill, I told you so, but it will be too late by then if we do. One injury, one lost life is too much for our consciences to bear as we wave through this bill. I urge members to vote on the basis of what the bill actually does, not what people think it does or what people uh, wish it might do or wish it had done. There is a very marked difference between the two. And that is such an important difference. I'm in my closing The, the member is just about to conclude I, now, I hope. I, I do apologise, Minister, but there is such a marked difference between those two. And that is an important one that we should always remember as legislators when we pass legislation. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you. I now call on Polly McNeill. Up to six minutes, please, Ms McNeill. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Scottish Labour, I'm pleased to open this debate. And I want to begin, as Jamie Green has done, by thanking my colleagues uh, very sincerely for what is a very thorough and excellent Stage 1 uh, report. So every year, the bonfire period, we see the strain and stress of the antisocial use of fireworks put in our communities, as well as the burden that it puts on the police and emergency workers. The bonfire period in particular it appears to have expanded from one night in the best part of two weeks in recent times, something that this bill unfortunately solidifies. We do not believe this bill goes far enough in many places, and as such, we are concerned that it may not change things on the ground. Scottish Labour has proposed amendments to strengthen the legislation, but almost all have been rejected by the government. For example, my amendment to further reduce the number of days that fireworks could be purchased and used during both the bonfire period and the New Year period that was supported by the Dogs Trust it was rejected. And the disparate dates, in my view, referred to already regarding when fireworks can be bought and issued is, is an issue of a bunch of 57 days around the calendar where they can be used with a different set of 37 days when they can be sold. The possibility for public confusion around this is extremely clear. And of course, there are offences attached to this. And I agree with Jamie Green on this point. I just wonder how enforceable that really is. Sadly, this bill may not make a difference unless the government is prepared to create more capacity for enforcement. And given the very low levels of enforcement for breaches of existing legislation around firework misuse, it is clear that we do need to provide the police with adequate resources if we are serious about what we have just heard. Uh, unfortunately, it has also been introduced at a time when police resources um, are, are uh, definitely a uh, subject for debate. We have expressed concerns around the lack of detail around the licensing scheme. My colleague uh, Clayton Clark at Stage 2 and Stage 3 uh, examined this in great detail. And we still stand by this, that it is possible to have a legislation without a scheme uh, because you've got permitted days for fireworks, um, and which would be an offence to set them off. But our primary objection to the licensing scheme runs the risk of fueling a black market, which I think the government were too quick to dismiss. And furthermore, I put down two amendments to try and keep any licensing fees small and affordable for most families. Those were rejected as well. A committee we heard from Norman Donald from the NGE Fireworks Display who warned that not everyone can afford a fee and some families come to our shop to spend £30 on a small selection box because they are once a year treat for their children. And if you introduce a fee of £30 or £50 or whatever um, you put that purchase out of their reach. But the important point here is that the knock-on effect of a complex, potentially expensive scheme in itself is the risk that people will turn to the black market. We have seen this in Northern Ireland. And um, I said already, the extent to which the bill was rushed through Parliament means we did not get a chance to examine this properly. But Northern Ireland, which operates a similar licensing scheme, the Belfast Telegraph reports that the black market fireworks are available everywhere. 
We heard that from the industry too, that, that they have got these concerns that the black market can consist of a wider range of different things, some of which are not currently legal. Bangers, for example, are a good example of this. And no one would want to see the rise of this extremely dangerous fireworks on our streets. I also felt it was important to give communities the chance to request a firework control zone if they are enduring a lot of antisocial behaviour in relation, relation to fireworks. Uh, many constituents in Glasgow who are keen to be able to request a firework control in their own community because they feel terrorised by fireworks at certain times of the year. But unfortunately, ministers were unwilling to support that as well, and that was rejected. In conclusion, presiding officer, the Criminal Justice Committee, in its Stage 1 report, did decide only on the balance, in fact, that it agreed with the general principles. And as Jamie Green said already, it is quite extraordinary in this Parliament that a committee would be so critical. Uh, and I am disappointed that more was not done to address those concerns. There are some things in the Bill that we, in fact, push for, such as the Police Scotland's uh, proposal, which is in the Bill now for the simple possession offence, which we were keen to see. But the Bill does have many flaws. And as I have to say, it was a difficult one for Scottish Labour to make a decision on because we are keen to see a strong message sent out about the antisocial use of fireworks will not be tolerated. And that is something we must be certain to, to, uh, to act on. I commend Jamie Green for what I thought was a very considered speech. We, however, will take a different position on the balance. Um, that is, we will support the government tonight on this bill. But I have to say that too is on the balance. And in conclusion, I urge the government to use the full force of existing law if they are serious about the control of fireworks and demonstrate that they are serious about the control of fireworks in our communities and allow the future committee to actually drill down in any regulations brought to it so we get an opportunity to correct the things that we thought from the very beginning were wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Ms McNeill. I now call on Willie Rennie. Up to four minutes, please, Mr Rennie. Yeah, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'd like to thank the Criminal Justice Committee, the clerks, and all those who gave evidence for their work on, on this bill. In 2019, my colleague Liam MacArthur called for powers to allow councils to make decisions around the use of fireworks and how they affect the local community. And I'm glad to see that we find elements of that in the legislation today. It's been clear for a long time that something has needed to be done to regulate the use of fireworks and to limit their misuse. Sadly, every year the police are called to address disturbances with groups of people hurling fireworks and other projectiles at emergency workers and private individuals. One year in Edinburgh, a police officer was badly burned and hospitalised after a firework was thrown in her face. Emergency workers do not deserve to be treated like this. They should be able to go about their duties without fear of physical violence. And it comes as no surprise that this bill has been welcomed by both the fire and police services. Now, as a, as a Liberal, I am instinctively wary about the state reaching further into our daily lives to impose any kind of control or stricture around a tradition that has been going on for centuries, which many people consider part of our heritage, especially when the vast majority of people who use fireworks do so in a responsible way. However, when we are witnessing the same sort of antisocial behaviour involving fireworks year in, year out, and with a local police sergeant ending up in the burns unit, when people feel threatened in their own homes as well as out in the streets, and when animals are scared witless. Because of a warped distortion of those traditions, we have to say enough is enough. So it is right that we make a proportionate action to reduce the likelihood that these sort of instances will occur. And the introduction of the Firework Licences Bill will help to resolve that in some kind of way. It is also important to note the growing problem of the use of pyrotechnics being used at sporting events, often in the middle of large crowds of people. Someone attending a football match with their children should be able to do so safe in the knowledge that a flare won't suddenly be lit right beside them. Now, I've listened to the contributions of Jamie Green and uh, other members today. Their concern about the, um, whether this bill goes far enough, and it may not be enough. Polly McNeill 
was absolutely right to take a balanced approach, as Jamie, did, Jamie Green did as well. And there's no doubt that I think we could have gone further with the bill. But, I mean, Paula McNeill said something interesting, that we do need to send a message to those who misuse fireworks. And that is right, but laws just can't be used to send messages. We actually need to make a real difference. And that's why I would urge the, the Minister to consider post-legislative scrutiny of this bill, to make sure that we have made the right decisions, so that we can review and introduce new measures if more measures are required. And I hope that she will respond to that in her closing remarks. Uh, and I'm conscious to some that we may sound in this parliament like a bunch of curmudgeons who are part of the, the fun police. But this isn't about limiting fun. This is about making sure that everyone can have fun, not those who would misuse our traditions and misuse these fireworks as weapons. So I would encourage everyone to vote for this bill today, but to come back to the chamber later and do it properly this time, to make sure we do scrutinise in a post-legislative way, to make sure we can improve this, if necessary, and have the, light, the correct laws for our country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Rennie. We now move to the open debate, and I call Audrey Nicholl to be followed by uh, Maggie Chapman. Up to four minutes, please, Ms Nicholl. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm very pleased to speak in this Stage 3 debate on the Fireworks and Pyrotechnic Scotland Bill. And in the short time available, I want to make just a few points about public expectation scrutiny and the harm caused by fireworks. But I again want to thank the Criminal Justice Committee clerking team, SPICE colleagues, our Community Participation and Communications team colleagues, who really supported members uh, throughout what was a challenging journey uh, due to the tight timescales and the breadth of the provisions being considered. And I also want to acknowledge the collegiate and good-humoured way that Criminal Justice Committee members worked together, uh, discussing and probing, challenging and disagreeing, but always respectfully and always in the spirit of making the best law that we could with the provisions set out. So the bill does not ban fireworks. Such a provision would be counterproductive and an unwelcome overreach in legislative provision. Rather, it seeks a culture shift, enabling us all to enjoy fireworks while recognising the public mood has shifted and greater controls are sought to address antisocial use of fireworks, distress to people, pets and livestock, and of course targeting emergency services workers who are simply trying to do their job. The majority of the 16,500 Scottish Government consultation responses saw strong support for increased control and supply, oversupply and use back in 2019. Subsequently, the Fireworks Review Group recommended 11, or I beg your pardon, made 11 recommendations, all tightening the legislative provision around fireworks. And the Criminal Justice Committee uh, digital engagement process similarly saw over 1,600 comments reflecting a desire for tighter controls. The Emergency Services, Animal Welfare Organisations, National Autistic Society, local authorities and the Blackburn Bonfire Night Action Group all consistent in their desire for change. And this helped inform the committee's strong desire to shape the bill and as evidenced by the volume of amendments at stages uh, one and two, at Big Bang two and three, members across the chamber were invested in this issue, truly representing their constituents and communities. However, the fireworks industry were less supportive, voicing concern, understandably, for the future of their businesses, should the bill be passed. The bill does make provision for compensation to be paid to affected businesses, and I'm pleased that the Scottish Government intends working with the industry, if the bill is passed, to lay the groundwork for how support can be delivered to help businesses adapt. 
So finally, turning to burn and blast injuries uh, that the Minister highlighted uh, when opening this debate, and which I feel received limited scrutiny uh, during stages one and two, but are crucial drivers for change. The British Society for Surgery of the Hand highlighted the devastating, life-changing burn and blast injuries to the face, hands and limbs from fireworks, preventable injuries commonly sustained by children, young men and in communities where there is increased deprivation, adding to the long-term burden of disease and disability in our communities. And the Royal Colleges of Surgeons of Glasgow and Edinburgh stated that despite public information and injury prevention campaigns, firework injuries continue to occur at a steady rate, and what could be considered as minor injuries cause suffering and devastate families. So they considered multiple elements in the bill would make a substantial difference in reducing harm, including fireworks licensing that changed purchase from impulse to one of a planned decision. So, presiding officer, in closing, uh, the journey of the bill was not straightforward. There were many diverging views on the provisions. However, should the bill be passed today, it is now for the Scottish Government to ensure the legislation coming forward delivers on its intentions of facilita facilitating a culture change that supports tighter control of fireworks, safe and enjoyable use of fireworks in all our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Nicholl. I now call Maggie Chapman to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Up to four minutes, please, Ms Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. <clears throat> On behalf of the Scottish Green Party, I welcome this bill and thank all who have worked so hard to make it a reality, both within and out with this Parliament. While we recognise the positive ways in which many people experience fireworks, the harms which they and pyrotechnics can cause have been a source of, con of long-standing concern to us. There are harms to communities, from noise, disruption and conflict, serious dangers at sporting events, strains, even attacks on emergency services. There are harms, both physical and psychological, to individuals, especially to children, neuro neurodivergent people, and those with sensory, process sensory processing conditions and veterans of armed conflict with PTSD, for whom the lights and sounds of fireworks can horribly mimic those of combat explosions. There are harms to animals, including our closest companions. In the stage one debate of this bill, I spoke of our childhood pet dog, Roly, who was terrified by a nearby fireworks display and fled in panic. It took us four days to find him, four days of the fear and anxiety all dog owners here will know. We got Roly back, but many are not so fortunate. A Blue Cross survey found that 70% of pets were reported as being negatively affected by fireworks. Trembling, physically sick, if indoors, then afraid to go outside for days, if outdoors, then following their instincts to escape, disorientated, lost, running into busy traffic. Firework debris with its toxic heavy, heavy metals represents a further danger, as does the noise of explosions, which can damage hearing. And these are only the animals we understand best. We know little about the effects they can have on others, on wildlife and livestock. And there are further environmental harms from the toxic components of fireworks, sulphur compounds, dioxins and particulates, intensifying air pollution, especially when combined with bonfires. Some older forms of fireworks also threaten water pollution, while in a heating climate the dangers of wildfire are ever increasing. These are real and serious forms of damage. But just as real are the pleasures, the celebrations, the community cohesion, which can come from a shared experience of watching fireworks. The challenge for this bill has been how to retain these positives while minimizing the negatives. The provisions for safety training, for licensing, for regulating the times and places where fireworks are acceptable, all represent opportunities to hold this balance sensitively and creatively. The passing of this bill will, of course, be only a beginning. There is much work to be done on the detailed regulations to bring its provisions into effect. And it is vital that this work includes the active participation of communities, real consultation, especially listening to the quietest voices. When the provisions do come into force, 
awareness and ed education will be essential. And the legislation will need to adapt to new circumstances, to changing cultures and technologies, working to encourage the development and use of low noise, low impact fireworks. In addressing the specific problems of irresponsible firework use, it is important that we do not lose sight of the broader and deeper questions raised, particularly by the Scottish Community Safety Network. What lies beneath attacks on emergency services and other forms of what we describe as antisocial behaviour? How can we build communities with space for exuberance and dissent that do not involve gunpowder and explosion? The jigsaw of devolved and reserved powers has added to the difficulties in both drafting and discussing this bill. It is inevitably a compromise, whatever our perspective, but it is also a paradigm of the process we are all involved in, part of an evolving awareness of human diversity and non-human need. We strive to use the powers we are privileged to hold in order to recognise different voices and different experiences in a Scotland that works for and welcomes everyone. I think this bill does that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Chapman. And I now call Stuart McMillan, who will be the last speaker in the open debate. Up to four minutes, please, Mr McMillan. Thank you very much, President Officer. President Officer, first of all, I'm pleased to be speaking in this debate, but I uh, also want to start off just by highlighting a couple of aspects regarding the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee, which is a committee which I chair. Uh, now, to be clear to the Chamber, I'm not speaking on behalf of the committee today, but I just want to uh, highlight a couple of aspects that we did. Uh, certainly, the committee welcomed three Scottish Government amendments in the bill at stage two. The amendments to the powers in sections 18, 24 and 35 changed the parliamentary procedure uh, in each case from negative to affirmative. And while the committee was content with the powers in principle during its stage one scrutiny, it is always very conscious of the need to strike a balance between the use of parliament time and also the appropriate level of scrutiny. And for each of these powers, the committee considered that the enhanced scrutiny of the affirmative procedure was the most appropriate. And given that the committee can sometimes challenge the Scottish Government's approach to delegated powers and bills, it is right that we also highlight times when the Government responds positively to the committee's recommendations. And I think this touches upon the point that Maggie Chapman uh, just highlighted uh, regarding the, this particular piece of legislation. Today isn't the end uh, of, uh, of uh, scrutinising uh, this particular legislation. Uh, as Maggie Chapman indicated in terms of the future secondary legislation that will come forward uh, in the future. So Parliament scrutiny does not end today. There will be more parliamentary scrutiny uh, as, uh, as time goes on. On the policy matters of the Bill, I am pleased that reducing the negative impact of fireworks and pyrotechnics in communities across Scotland is at the heart of this Bill. Many people enjoy fireworks, whether it is Guy Fawkes displays or, or they are part of a festival performance or family celebration. But we do have to legislate in a way that does not prohibit people from enjoying these things. We will take into account the harmful impact that the loud noise uh, can have on pets, wildlife and people who have sensory issues, including veterans. And the bill is also an important step towards reducing the burden on emergency services and preparing for and responding to firework-related incidents. And data from Police Scotland indicates that around 900 firework-related incidents were reported in the 2019-20 firework period, and there is no clear evidence that the number of firework-related incidents reported to the police is changing. And for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, 342 incidents were identified with fireworks as a contributing factor between 2009-10 and also 2019-20, with around half of these incidents occurring on the days around Bonfire Night. And these incidents, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Green, uh, and these incidents were more concentrated in more deprived areas. And I have seen that in my own constituency, uh, where police, uh, a few years ago, the police actually went to uh, one part uh, of Greenock, uh, and the riot police were actually there in that particular evening. And it was horrendous to see the scenes that took place that night. So, I also, it is clear uh, then that there are considerable financial costs and resource implications for Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to plan and prepare for the 5th of November and the period leading up to it each year. There is also an impact on the NHS and ambulance service, as common fireworks-related injuries affect hands and heads, as already heard, uh, with mortars and rockets responsible for the majority of serious eye and hand injuries. These often require that specialist treatment, surgical intervention, and can sometimes, as we know, be fatal. Fireworks can also pollute the air with gases, 
particles and other elements that are potentially harmful to human health and the environment. Another reason why this bill is so important. Something also, tougher action on the sale and use of fireworks and tackling the misuse of pyrotechnics has clear public support. I know that from people who have contacted me about this bill. I know this bill will be supported in my constituency. I believe this bill will be welcomed by many constituents across the country, particularly those who are veterans, have sensory issues, or live with someone who has sensory issues, and also pet owners, as others have, discussed, have highlighted. So with that, I will be pleased to be voting for this legislation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr McMillan. And we will now move to closing speeches. And I call on Katie Clark. Uh, up to five minutes, please, Ms Clark. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm pleased to close this debate on behalf of Scottish Labour. Pauline McNeill and myself have sought to amend this legislation, both in the committee and here in the chamber, with a view to making it more effective and workable. We recognise the significant problem which Scotland has with the anti-social use of fireworks, which we believe is a growing problem. And indeed, we have heard from a number of members today of the extent of that problem. We know, however, that most people simply want to enjoy fireworks and believe that the best place to do that is at public events. We also believe that this, will, will indeed, this bill will indeed reduce the use of fireworks and we welcome the creation of a new offence to criminalise the supply of fireworks to under 18s to ensure that adults do not supply fireworks to children. During the passage of this bill, however, we have outlined our concerns that the licensing scheme may have the unintended consequence of creating a black market and unregulated fireworks with all the greater safety risks they involve. As Pauline McNeill has said already, a similar scheme was introduced in Northern Ireland. And there it has been reported that fireworks are widely available on the black market and there is no evidence of a decline in firework-related antisocial behaviour. At the stage two amendment stage, I also spoke about Italy, where again a similar licensing scheme was introduced, but that seems to have done nothing to address the problems they have there with the very dangerous, unre unregulated um, use of illegal fireworks. At stage one and two, I put down amendments to strengthen the legislation to enable local authorities to create no firework zones where all fireworks use would be banned. I believe this is actually what those who have been campaigning for firework reform were actually looking for, and it would have been far simpler legislation. The amendments I put down were not successful, and I know other members put down amendments which would have had a similar effect. I will... Yes, of course. Uh, Minister Ashwigan. I just want to pick up on the member's point she made there about banning fireworks or the ability to do that. I believe we have been over this several times now. Would the member accept that I have explained uh, repeatedly, both to the committee and in the chamber, that Scotland does not have the power to ban fireworks? I think we have had this discussion previously, and indeed the fact that we are able to put down amendments which would have the effect of banning fireworks shows that indeed that we do have that power. We can ban, and indeed this legislation bans the sale of fireworks for most of the year. It bans the use of fireworks for most of the year. In reality, we can ban fireworks, but I appreciate the point that the Minister is making, and indeed it's a point I think she made at the Stage 2 debate. Um, I, I will take an intervention. Russell Finlay. I recall the Minister telling the committee that she had no desire to introduce a ban on fireworks. Katie Clark. Indeed that. I, I do indeed recall that also. And um, I think, as, as the Minister says, we've had extensive debate about these issues at the various stages. I welcome that the Scottish Government has listened to some of the arguments that have been made and has added private operators to the proposed firework control zone. Public displays, however, are not banned by this legislation, and there is no way to do that unless the Scottish Parliament legislates further. I hope that this is an issue that the Scottish Government will revisit at a later stage so that it is possible to ban fireworks where councils believe it is necessary 
and in particular near facilities such as hospitals, care facilities and animal shelters. From the outset, Scottish Labour has been clear that it wants this bill to succeed and to be effective. Fireworks misuse is already illegal, but despite the many hundreds of complaints to the police every year, as we've heard already, there are very few prosecutions taken and even fewer convictions. Between 2016 and 2020, there were only four solemn and 16 summary firework convictions. And as Jamie Green said earlier, there were no firework convictions in the year 2020-21. We have real concerns that some of the provisions of this legislation will be confusing, unworkable and expensive, and therefore the public will not comply and may fall foul of the law inadvertently. I very much hope that the Scottish Government is correct that this bill will result in the culture shift that they are seeking. But that will only happen if the Crown Office and the police put the resources into implementing existing legislation. As we have said, we are disappointed that the Government did not respond further to the Stage 1 report, but because of the new offences that will be created and because we do believe that this bill will reduce the use of fireworks, we will support the legislation when it comes to the vote. Thank you, Ms Clark. I now call on Russell Finlay. Uh, up to five minutes, please, Mr Finlay. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I usually take interventions, but with so much to cover in five minutes, um, I will not have the time to do so. I also want to begin by saying thank you to the Criminal Justice Committee clerks, the Bills team and those who gave evidence to the committee. Um, when fireworks, well, fireworks are the source of great enjoyment to, to many people, including myself and including the fun-filled Willie Rennie. Others regard them as a nuisance or indeed worse. The Scottish Government's Firework Review Group first met in December 2019 and produced its report almost a year later. Now, just 18 months after that, following a fast-track timetable, we have this bill in front of us today. Let us uh, strip it back. It does three main things. One, it requires anyone buying or using fireworks to have a licence. It creates firework control zones and it limits firework use by the public to 57 days per year. Now, many key details remain unknown, with the government effectively saying, trust us, pass the bill and we will work it all out later. That is just not good enough. I will now turn to these three main issues. Perhaps the most contentious is licensing. We still do not know how much a licence will cost. If we compare the Nor Northern Irish model, it is anticipated that around 1,500 Scots may apply for one, yet up to 250,000 in Scotland buy fireworks annually. What will these people do instead? Our concern is that the SNP's licensing scheme is so badly flawed that it will drive people to a black market. No work has been done on addressing this concern. This risks achieving the opposite of what is attended, a rise in firework misuse and the type of injuries as described by the Minister in her opening statement. At stage two, I secured an agreement from the Minister that applicants for a licence must disclose convictions for fire raising, yet she refused to budge on the disclosure of other convictions, including antisocial behaviour, football violence and even terrorism. My attempts to increase sentencing were also rejected. Now let's look at firework control zones. People might think from their name these will prohibit firework use in these areas. They do not. At stage two, I secured an agreement from the Minister to ban professional displays in private gardens within these zones, but public displays will still be allowed. As Katie Clark said, this will not help pet owners, farmers or people with sensory issues who wanted clearly defined areas in which fireworks are completely banned. Then there is the issue of fireworks only being used on 57 days. The Government have failed to explain properly how they arrived at these dates. It seems inevitable that other cultural or religious occasions will need to be added in future. The Bill limits fireworks sales to 37 days, which surely risks dangerous stockpiling in people's homes. And also, this is a big one, professional companies will still be free to operate 365 days of the year. As with the flawed firework control zones, this will do no nothing for those seeking respite from noise. Presiding officer, this bill has been 
rushed. My colleague Jamie Green has already explained why, so the proxy purchasing for under-18s could be dealt with quickly, but there was no need to rush. In doing so, we are left with a bill that contains huge gaps and may make existing problems even worse. I have been immersed in this legislation for months, and it is still not easily understood. Frankly, it is confusing. The Scottish Conservatives have tried to fix it as best we can. I commend Jamie Green for securing an agreement, an aggravator for those using fireworks to attack emergency service workers. I lodged 46 amendments at stage two and 12 at stage three, with some being accepted. Many of my party's concerns can be seen in the stage two debate and the Justice Committee's highly critical stage one report. Remember, this report was agreed to with the backing of SNP members. It was agreed to in the understanding that the government would address our points of concern. They have failed to do so. So many critical questions remain unanswered. We already have nine separate laws that deal with firework misuse, but it is painfully apparent that these are not being used to their full extent. I share the industry's very real fears that this bill could become the catalyst for a dangerous and unregulated black market in Scotland. The government admits that it will be powerless to police online firework sales. The minister today described the bill as groundbreaking. I fear she may be right. If this bill was indeed a firework, it would be the dodgy one that fizzles out and then falls over on the lawn, best not to approach. While we are aligned entirely with the Bill's intention, we cannot support such clunky and convoluted legislation that may end up doing more harm than good. It is important that we are honest about this with the public and the stakeholders who engaged in this process. We will abstain today. And judging from the comments from Katie Clark and Polly McNeill, I am hopeful Labour may consider doing so also. However, we do understand that this bill is still likely to pass. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr Finlay. And I now call on Ash Regan, Minister, to wind up on behalf of the Scottish Government. Up to six minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I thank members for their participation today. And in my opening statement, I shared the stories of just a few people in Scotland whose lives have been changed forever due to horrific firework and pyrotechnic related injuries. And sadly, this is merely the tip of the iceberg of the wide ranging distress and harm that the people of Scotland experience <coughs> due to fireworks and pyrotechnics. And, presiding officer, I'd like to draw the atten attention of the chamber to the fact that Eleanor Robertson, so she's the senior clinical research fellow burns and plastic surgery at Glasgow Royal Infirmary joins us in the public gallery today and she's joined by Amy McNabb whose son was um, badly injured by a firework accident and is a campaigner on the issue. Thank you for joining us today. Um, throughout extensive consultation and engagement we've heard from thousands of people about how their lives have been and continue to be impacted by fireworks being used in their communities. And I have no doubt that many in the chamber today have heard very similar views from their constituents. And as elected members, we all know that we need to be able to look our constituents in the eye and say that we are doing everything we can to protect them from such harm. And I think it's important to highlight that while issues around fireworks misuse featured strongly during the consultation, it was clear that sporadic and unpredictable use of fireworks was also problematic. And one heartbreaking example that I was recently made aware of was of the untimely passing of a much-loved uh, family dog due to fireworks. So I was, um, the this, this story was shared with me last month. Uh, so that's by no means, of course, fireworks season. And loud fireworks were suddenly set off one weekend. The dog was so frightened, he managed to escape and was last seen on train tracks. Uh, the community rallied together to find him, to reunite him with his owners, but sadly, his body was found the following day. So, presiding officer, as I've previously stated, this bill is not a panacea, but it is a crucially important step in the culture change that I am committed to, to progressing alongside wider actions such as education and awareness raising to keep people 
animals and communities safe from the harm that can be caused by fireworks and the misuse Excuse of Excuse me, just one second, Minister. Would you resume your seat for a second? There is far too much noise in the Chamber. We need to listen to the Minister responding to the debate. Thank you, Minister. Please continue. Thank you, Presiding Officer. So, turning now to some of the contributions that we heard this afternoon. The Conservatives' contributions, I'm afraid to say, Presiding Officer, I felt were quite dismal. Yep. I think the tone was entirely wrong, and they were quite out of step, I would say, with the support that has been shown for this bill, both by the public and by the many, many stakeholders that support the provisions in this bill. Um, the black market, predictably, was raised again during the, the debate, and as I've said on many occasions prior to this, displacement was fully considered during the development of the proposals. And I don't think it was a compelling argument when it was raised before, and I don't think it's a compelling argument now. It's like saying that people will circumvent laws on alcohol or they'll circumvent laws on air weapons, so we just shouldn't have any restrictions. I mean, that is a, it's a nonsensical argument, quite frankly. And if we were going to take that approach, there wouldn't be any public safety legislation at all. And I'm not sure that that is quite what the Conservatives are suggesting there. Uh, Willie Rennie um, raised some uh, very pertinent examples, I thought, about why this bill is so needed. And he asked me about keeping uh, the law, if this bill is passed this evening, under review. And so I can give that assurance um, to the Chamber this evening that the provisions will, of course, be kept under review. They will be monitored and they will, of course, be updated if it is found that that is required. Uh, Audrey Nicholl highlighted uh, clinical associations' um, support for the bill, and she mentioned how serious many of the firework injuries that they have to deal with are. And Maggie Chapman highlighted the negative impact on pets, on wildlife, and on the environment. And I would also agree with her assessment of the limitations and often the compromise that is involved in drafting legislation in a devolved settlement, which is something that seems to have escaped the Conservatives entirely. Uh, I agree with Stuart Macmillan, and he spoke of issues, quite movingly, I thought, of issues in his area, things that he'd seen and witnessed in Greenock, and the support that he said that this bill would be shown by the public in his constituency. So, presiding officer, as you will be aware, there are a range of stakeholders who have expressed support for this bill. And that includes the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, uh, Police Scotland, the Scottish Society for the Prevention of Animal Cruelty to Animals, and the National Autistic Society, and that's amongst many, many others. And just last week, a coalition of seven medical institutions, including the British Medical Association and British Burn Association, wrote to me to express their support for the bill. And their letter highlights that the associations welcome the legislation and believe that it will ensure that while fireworks will still be able to be enjoyed, this can be done more safely and, and more responsibly as well. So I was particularly struck by the sobering observation that was made by the president of one of the associations who said that if this new legislation prevents just one severe burn or one mutilating eye or hand injury. It will all have been worthwhile. And I agree. If Parliament passes this bill here today, we will be taking a significant step forward to reducing the harm, reducing the distress, and reducing the injuries that can be caused by fireworks and pyrotechnics. And I know that safety and well-being of the people of Scotland is something that all members regardless of our party affiliations, will agree is of prime importance and it is a worthy aim to be united in working towards. And for that reason, I invite members to agree to the passing of this bill. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate on fireworks and pyrotechnic articles of Scotland Bill and it is now time to move on to the next item of business. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 5254 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme. I call on George Adam, Minister, to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you. I call on Stephen Kerr to speak to and to move Amendment 5254.1. Up to five minutes, please, Mr Kerr. 
Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I move the amendment in my name. Yesterday, the SNP and Greens blocked my attempt to have a statement this week from the Lord Advocate on the legal considerations of the proposed independence referendum. During her statement, the First Minister said, and I quote, I am sure that the Lord Advocate would be more than happy to answer questions from MSPs. In response to my amendment, however, the Minister for Parliamentary Business gave one reason, just one, that this statement couldn't happen. He was concerned about Standing Order 7.5 and the possibility of breaching the subjudice rule. In a point of order earlier today, Donald Cameron quite clearly dispelled that concern by pointing out that the rule only applies to active cases. And since there is no hearing date set for the Supreme Court's consideration of the Lord Advocate's reference, it is not an active case and therefore cannot breach the law or the standing orders. This fact was confirmed and reinforced by the presiding officer of the Scottish Parliament. Therefore, the only obstacle standing in the way of the Lord Advocate delivering a statement tomorrow is gone. And at an emergency bureau meeting this afternoon, the minister said that his legal advice stated otherwise. Legal advice or a political instruction from the first minister, who knows? Either way, quite frankly, the minister's opinion is neither here nor there. His stated concern was with the standing orders of the Scottish Parliament. Well, the presiding officer of the Scottish Parliament has ruled that the Lord Advocate can come to this chamber tomorrow. If the Minister does not accept this, then, quite simply, I put it to him, he is questioning the authority of Parliament. Now, sadly, it did appear earlier today that the Minister was content to take that position, opting to prevent the Lord Advocate from coming to the chamber. His government hides from scrutiny at every opportunity. But I am sure that the Lord Advocate is more than capable of coming to this chamber and making a statement and answering questions before the Scottish Parliament. It will surprise no one, Deputy Presiding Officer, that the SNP and Greens at the Bureau today teamed up again to block a parliamentary statement from the Lord Advocate. My amendment corrects that. Donald Cameron was right. This might be the only, the only chance to hold this statement and to question the Lord Advocate. And therefore, I encourage members to be on the right side of this vote. I, I thank Mr Kerr uh, for speaking to and moving Amendment 5254.1. I would just like to say as a matter of clarity, because I was in the chair at the time, what I said was that sub was not engaged until a hearing date was set on the separate issue of the Lord Advocate making any statement. I simply said that that was a matter for the Bureau in the first instance. I thought it was useful to clarify what I said, which of course is a matter for the record. I now call on George Adam, Minister, to respond on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I will make three very important points here, key points in this issue. The Lord Advocate's reasons for making the reference were explained clearly and fully by the First Minister in her statement yesterday. My second point is the substantive issues in the reference are now before the Supreme Court, regardless of the precise application of standing orders, and, in, and the Court should be allowed to fulfil its function without political discussion of the merits. My third and final point, presiding officer, the Lord Advocate is not in a position to disclose the content of legal advice given to the Government. Thank you, presiding officer. Thank you, Minister. The question is that Amendment 5254.1, in the name of Stephen Kerr, which seeks to amend Motion 5254, in the name of George Adam, setting out a business programme, be agreed. Are we all agreed? 
Uh, the Parliament has not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote. There will now be a short suspension to allow members to access the digital voting system. Do we see the pen?